Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Anime Over Analyst here, and today I've got yet another breakdown of Black Clover. This is going to be Black Clover's opening nine, and this is going to be a fun one. I've been researching this one a little bit, trying to get better at these breakdowns, and there's a lot that I'm going to unpack here that is really quite fascinating after rewatching it several times. So, let's just jump right on into it. So, we start off here with an image of Tetia. Tetia is Lick's wife before the whole massacre happened. And Tetia is the sister of the first wizard king, whose name is Lemiel Sil Silva Vermilion Clover. So we will see him a little bit later on, but this is just kind of the first snapshot of Tetia. And she is holding her bouquet, you know, in her wedding gown. Basically saying that this has taken place during that wedding ceremony where it's all happy. And you can see everything's bright, kind of showing just how positive this time was and how celebratory it really is. So we're going to just go on. And then, by the way, this is off of the Crunchyroll uh, YouTube. We get this next shot of, once again, Tetia and Licht. They're, you know, embracing each other. I kind of noticed that Licht's here in shadow, probably foreshadowing the whole darkness that's going to become of him later on when uh, he starts trying to... Licht doesn't really go on a mass murder spree. That's more Patoli, but Licht does start... Um, he does become a demon later on once he sees everyone massacred. So I guess he does kind of go on a killing spree. But we get this nice, good old close-up of the two just kind of loving each other. And now we're going to get this kind of uh, montage of shots of mainly the the elves that are the apostles. They are trying, I'm trying to get, they are the apostles of Sephira. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. So uh, we got here on the right, we've got uh, Raya, and he's with a very young Patoli. And Patoli always kind of looked up to Raya and everyone else, so it's a really nice shot. And next, we're going to have, we got Fauna on the left. We've got Sharla in the in front, you know, Fauna's doing Sharla's hair. Just, they're showcasing just kind of how fun everything is. Notice that everything's kind of askewed, which is real interesting. We've also got a clot here in the center that's, uh, was the elf that took over Mary, uh, which is Gosha's little sister. And then we got uh, Lufulu, who took over Luck. So we got just those four here. Then we got here Veto, who, you know, it's just Veto. We've got uh, Drawa, who took over Gosh. Then we've got uh, Lyra, who took over Rill, and he's holding up an apple, which is interesting but i don't really think there's very much to showcase for that and then we've got this guy named roan who is really quite interesting because after doing some research i found out that he's just possessing some random human no one really knows who the original human of ron is or roan and so that's real interesting it's even up to this day we don't know who the original human of ron is and so maybe that'll come into play later on. Or maybe it's just something that's going to be forgotten. I don't know. That's just an interesting mystery to me. And I love how they're all kind of just standing in front of this sunset. Basically, uh, oh, I see. Go, uh, Brow was carrying a bucket of apples. Oh, they're both, they both gathered apples. Gotcha, gotcha. So you think that after watching these openings like hundreds of times, I'll you know, be able to catch everything. But no, I'm still catching things during these breakdowns. So I love the whole sunset feel because the whole wedding does take place at like a twilight, and that's when things start really going dark. So we get this this really cool scene, and I practically freaked out when I was doing research, and you could see uh, my Twitter post because at first I thought this was just a picture of uh, Lemiel, 
you know, he's taken the full shot here that he's the first Wizard King, like I mentioned before. It's uh, his sister, Tetia, that's marrying Licht. But if you notice, back here in the left-hand corner, we get our first appearance of Sekre. And that makes me so happy, because Sekre is kind of my waifu. <laughs> my, not yours. But we just get a brief shot of both of them. I love that. Then we get another shot of Tetia, but as you're no going to notice in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, we're going to see that her bouquet is starting to burn up, just kind of an imagery of all of these humans that have basically started the massacre. And they're kind of like nameless humans, but we see uh, Licht here. We're going to back up a little bit. We see Licht here holding the body of his dead wife, and one of their dead twins. He, d I don't think he knows that they're. He, she's carrying two babies, but very gruesome. And I'm really glad that the grimoire is kind of covering up the belly because that's just nuts. And you can. R this is where he really goes insane and turns into that demon. He turns into a dark elf and really becomes a demon. You can kind of see with that with the shadow here and just that very intense look, like visualize i'm loving this op a lot the mu the song is kind of weird and kind of bonkers but I, visually this this op is amazing now we're gonna get the these following shots and if you notice they're gonna be doing this white black palette you're gonna recognize this from one of the openings earlier i believe it's opening two or four but basically um, the same thing that happens with the black bulls, but instead of the black bulls, we've got the rest of the apostles. So right here off the bat, we've got, uh, Lufulu and no, that's not Lufulu. That is Lyra. And then behind him is, sorry, I'm checking my notes. The one that possessed Dorothy. I think this one's unnamed. Yeah, this one's this one's unnamed. Then I because we got a lot, lot of unnamed ones. You know, we got that whole uh, shadow flip here. Once again, we've got uh, this guy on the left. He's unnamed, but we've got Ron again. And so, once again, quite quite interesting. Then we're going to fast forward here to the Tree of Life here, and you're going to notice that there's 10 spots. I'm going to back up just a slight smidge. We've got 10 spots here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times. So, yeah. And uh, if you notice even back here, each of these elves are standing in front of one of the spots, which is just kind of a nice, cool little touch. So... Trying to back up here. So yes, there's ten, and one for pretty much each apostle, um, including uh, including uh, Eclat, who, like I said, took over Marion. So now we get this kind of weird transition, and then we get, once again, Eclat's with Drawa. And then we've got Veto, who's just kind of chilling in front of his own. I love, just kind of love that chill, that smirk. We got Fauna here, who's kind of got that gleeful look. Gets kind of like a Yandere look. Then we've got, we've got uh, Raya just chilling here. He's like, yeah, I don't care. I'm going to just chill right on here. Love it. And then we've got uh, Patoli here, who's got that very dark sinister look all about him because he's the one that took charge of the eye of the midnight sun so we got here and i'm gonna play out this sequence here a little bit because it's actually really telling about the style and i want to see if you notice something so I will say right off the bat, we've got Yuno and Asta. They're, they have the backs towards the camera, and they're facing the um, 
this giant floating rock that the Eye of the Midnight Sun's kind of controlling towards the capital. So they're going there, and we, we get the title sequence here. Nothing new, no, you know, all fancy smancy. And then, once again, we've got them looking out into the distance, you know, all stoic, all serious, because this is a very serious chance. We've got Vanessa, we've got Magna holding Luck, because this is takes place after that fight where uh, Luck was being controlled by LaFulu, and manages to overcome it we've got henry gray and um uh gordon just you know they're they're sorrow because their base was just attacked by the eye of the midnight sun and gosh and Mer- uh left with mary we've got finroll in the foreground with yami just chilling in the background and finroll has got that whole like upset kind of nervous look on his face like he usually does because um he's witnessing kind of like the actions that his brother Longris is doing and that'll be played out for more we've got zora looking off to the right you know off to the left here and then we got noel looking forward and so we uh, i'll come back to this scene because this one's also really interesting but wondering if you actually notice anything about these black bulls uh, plus, you know, and it's something that I noticed while researching. You don't get to see their eyes at all. I'm just going to play this forward one more time. Everyone's eyes are in shadow. Like the, the closest you're going to get here is like Vanessa's and hers is just kind of blurred out. Everyone else has either got their back turned or they're in shadow, which is real fascinating. You know, we've got Gordon, his hat's covering his. Now, Gray's covering hers, and uh, Henry, you just can't see. It's like his hair is covering his. We've got Fennel, she's just straight up, straight up not in the frame. Same with Yami's. It's like they're witnessing something so severe that we just can't see their eyes, which is a very unique touch, and I like that because it's really showing the desperation that the Black Bulls are facing in this you know time because this is where the arc really turns stark. This is when the Eye of the Midnight Sun kind starts killing people. And once again, we've got Noel. You know, her eyes are gone. Same with Zorda's. So that's just a cool touch. Now we're going to get this very, very brief shot. And I've been trying to decipher what this is. Because it starts off kind of looking like Noel with her twin ponytails. However, it ends, like, real briefly. And it, if if you even notice, it's like a, it's not even a second long. Like it's really just a couple frames that that just seems to be kind of randomly thrown in here, but I doubt it. We've got this uh, light in the back; it's shining the shadow on someone, and so I've got a couple theories. One is that this could be Megicula, who um, maybe uh, like a younger version of Noel's mother. I don't. Th- think so um, mainly because of just kind of this look right there I wish I was able to pause it just before yeah right here to me that looks like a possibility of Libe like this is kind of the first showing of Libe and this could be Asta standing here I think so you know the true form of Libe I, I think this is what the true form of Libe is just kind of starting to be showcased And that's real fascinating. I really like that. There's a lot of subtle foreshadowing in this opening that is just so amazing. I love it. Next, we're going to get into these scenes where you kind of get to see the snapshots of a whole bunch of characters, like character arcs, and showing what their struggles are. So we start off with Fenril uh, looking behind Longris, because Longris is always much more powerful one for being his little brother, and you can kind of see even the height difference, like, I'm kind of going off of the nose here because the hair's a little wild, you can kind of see that Longris is shorter than Fenrir, and the fact that uh, Fenrir always looks up to his brother Longris because his brother Longris is just so much stronger than he is, is astounding, and so... 
just kind of like that little snapshot there, we've got this snapshot of Luck looking up to his mother because Luck, Luck's whole being, his whole existence, is that he wants to make his mother happy. That's why he's called the cheerful maniac or the cheerful berserker because he wants to do some. He wants to make his family happy, and we get that really nice short character arc for Luck, where he, for once in this entire series, this is like the first time that we really get to see Luck cry, and that's because he asks Magna, like. Am I home? Am I with my family? And Magna, of course, says yes. He's like, you idiot. You're, we're always your family. So really touching scene there. You get to see that kind of small snapshot there. We've got this snapshot of Gosh holding Mary's hand because in the beginning, Gosh and Mary were pretty much the only ones together. Like, Gosh tried to take care of Mary throughout her childhood. And... Like, the whole, like, love obsession with Mary is just mainly him being super protective of her because, you know, they grew up orphans, grew up by themselves, and Gosh got imprisoned, which made him really worry about Mary. And is he overprotective? Sure. But I really like just... I kind of like Gosh's character a little bit just because... He's misunderstood as being a fanatic. I mean, he is a fanatic over his sister, but it's because he cares about her, her safety. And he grew up having to protect her, having to take care of her as the older brother. And you kind of see this happen uh, later on where he starts learning to protect for, protect others that he cares about. And so this is once again showcasing that struggle. And then we get this final struggle goal of Noelle, you know, standing in the background, uh, just feeling upset as her family, you know, this is her brother, uh, Solid, Nozelle, and Negra, who, uh, actually, sorry, Nebra. Sorry, I was looking at my notes. I'm terrible with names, hence why I have notes. And, uh, they're... She is looking at them because they're constantly making fun of them. And you can even see Nebra and Solid just completely joking about it. However, uh, Nozel is very stoic. He's just kind of there. And that's because Nozel actually really tries not to pick on Noel like the other, other two does. I mean, he does a little bit, but he his justification is because he wants to protect her. Like... He's not doing it for fun. He's doing it because he thinks that it will protect her. Whereas the other two do it for fun. They think that it's fun to make fun of her. And that's what really brings Noelle down. So just really love this imagery here. Just really, once again, putting a spotlight on that. Now we're going to get the Black Bulls again. And this time we get to really see their eyes. We have uh, Henry... Henry... Gordon and Gray, they kind of are the weird outcast trio, I would say. They're kind of, they're just kind of their own thing, and they always seem to be kind of grouped together, which is real fascinating. Sometimes a gauche is thrown into it, too, but just a real interesting trio. We also get to see all of the um, elves starting to approach the castle, so got that nice cool shot. We got the shot of Vanessa, Magna, Luck, and Charmy eating Charmy's food because they're on their way to essentially the Shadow Castle, which the elves make later on. Then we got the shot of Fenrir versus Longris, and we don't really get to see Longris, but we know this fight that ensues and all of the chaos that goes. We get a nice closer-up shot of the elves as they're descending from the rock trying to prevent the shadow castle they're trying to prevent the resistance from stopping the shadow castle we've got zora doing his trap magic and just you know uttering out a fantastic yell he's like i'm going to stop you fools we've got asta finally looking up very quick scene but asta where i'm imagining him still standing on that rock he's witnessing all of this destruction, he's witnessing all of his friends fighting, and he's looking up, he's like, okay, it's time to really get serious. 
we've got Noelle with good old jiggle physics uh, flying down, and this is where she starts uh, donning her Valkyrie armor, which is kind of the symbolism of her mother and, and like her becoming more confident in herself. So I really like the shot. And, you know, Noelle is going up against Fauna, which we're going to see here, right here in this second. So this is now taking place in the Shadow Castle. So we've moved on from uh, being outside with Asta going, okay, it's time to jump into this, to now we're being in the Shadow Castle. So we've got those two fighting. We've got uh, Fagolian going in, and he's going up against, uh, I think it's just kind of like one of the random members, actually. Uh, I don't quite remember it, unfortunately. Uh, you can tell me in the comment section down below how wrong I am. And then we've got Mero Leona against uh, Veto, you know, and I like this image because they're both beasts in their own right. We got Veto, who physically looks like a beast and he inhabits beast magic and then we get mario leona who basically grew up in the wild and is just savage like she's just such a fascinating character so she goes in for the punch then we get this nice snapshot of mario leona and fugolion as they recognize each other's siblings in this arc and just recognize the power struggle and their personality, and it looks like they're having fun fighting their opponents because they know that the other is strong. So I love that a lot. Then we get this nice shot of, you know, he's actually avoiding these uh, light swords, which uh, Licht throws up. Actually, I don't think it's Licht. I think it's uh, Atoli. They throw up at him. You know, he's just dodging them because he's a freaking mad lad. We've got Mimosa. She's hearing someone. Who that someone is, is I believe is Licked, the real Licked. And she's uh, healing him, trying to, you know, restore him. And she's got that just like, don't die mentality. We've got Yami coming in being a badass as always. And then Jack the Ripper behind him because both him and Jack kind of really take the reins and really try to take down uh, Licht and uh, Patoli in this arc. Really, really cool. And I like how they kind of showcase Jack a little bit, even though he's just kind of there. Then we got Nozel with his uh, magic. And you can see that he's all worn down because, you know, he just took a beating against Compass Lady. But he gets back up. We got... Patoli's going nuts. He's going to start falling into despair here, becoming a dark elf. And we get to see this one shot of his younger version kind of sitting in front of a chair, just, you know, in complete despair with, you know, complete darkness all around him with a single spotlight. And here in the background, you see uh, William Vengeance, uh, pretty much engrossed into this tree. He's encased by this tree because, of course, his magic is the world tree magic. And he's sitting there and, of course, in complete despair as he, kind of, his only companion is the friend that he kind of entrapped within his own body because he took over his soul. So we've got this whole transformation of the four-leaf clover turning into the five-leaf clover in hints of... Uh, the demon Zagrid, or sorry, the devil Zagrid, but we also see Asta with a light behind him because the light almost always represents Asta and just the hope that Asta brings, you know. Yeah, it's pretty much hope for the future. This is a constant theme throughout these openings is just these lights. And he goes in to try to save uh, Patoli, and that's where we get this really nice shot. This is, once again, Asta diving down to save Patoli. So, at this point, we still really haven't seen much of the devil, except for after this shot. So, this, I believe, is Yuno's magic, uh, magic stone. And we get this nice kind of shimmering gleam before um, we get this shot. And this is a shot of 
you know, the first Magic Knights, Lemiel, who's just chilling on top. And we got Sekere. Well, at this point, it's Nero sitting on top. And so we get we establish this weird connection here. It's like Sekere on top of the Magic Knight. Now, we of course, we all know that it's Sekere and who grew up, you know, lived in the time of the first Magic Emperor before she got cursed. But that's not... Well, actually, I think that is revealed in the show during uh, during this arc uh, where this OP is played. But just really, really nice look. Or maybe not, because now that I think about it, I think uh, the next OP is where Sekre is first revealed. I think that's what happens. And um, we get this nice shot of... Uh, Lemiel and uh, Lix just being pals because, of course, they're trying to unite the elven and the human races, the, the human clans, and just trying to spread prosperity. You know, we don't have to fight each other. We don't have to go to war. We could be at peace. And then we see the first shot of the devil, Zagrid, as he takes over that stone that was finally placed in. And he, he's all smiling because he just played everyone. He played everyone so hard. And then we get the final shot of Asta and Juno just being badasses as they prepare to attack. I love that. You know, we got Asta's double form taking up the entire left side while Juno's kind of elven form takes up the right side. Like always, this is... Synonymous. This happens throughout the entire series. Asa is always on the left, and Yuno is always on the right. So, I love it. Very, very cool visually of an OP. And so, that's going to wrap it up here. I know this was a long video, and I know that I sounded stupid at times. But, there was a lot of things I wanted to point out. And so, if you made it this far, I thank you very much. You know? So, yeah. That's going to be it for me. I'm the Anime Over Analyst, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.